Hi, I'm attorney Gregory Dell, joined today by attorney Rachel Alters, and we're going to talk about disability denial reason number five, which is titled, Your Medical Evidence is Weak. And Rachel, when we talk about medical evidence in a long-term disability insurance claim, how important is the medical evidence in order for a disability claimant to be approved? Greg, it's a really good question, and I would have to say that the medical evidence is absolutely the most important factor in getting a disability claim approved. Without good medical evidence that's very strong and supportive by all of the treating doctors, the disability claim will likely get denied. Okay, so people may think, well, obviously that, you know, that, that seems obvious, but what does it take for a claimant, especially when you're representing somebody, to have medical evidence that's strong enough so that they can get past the disability company's arguments that they just don't have enough support? It's really important and obviously, you know, there's many different medical conditions that disable people, but it's very important that there's objective medical proof in the medical record that shows that, you know, that supports the person's actual um, diagnosis. So whether that's an MRI or an X-ray or blood work or specific testing. It's really important that there's very strong and good objective medical evidence included in the medical record. Um, without medical objective medical evidence, it's very easy for the insurance carrier to say, well, there's not enough proof. Um, you know, this is all subjective complaints by the, the patient and there's nothing to back it up other than what the patient is telling the doctor. Now, objective medical evidence along with subjective complaints makes the medical evidence much stronger. And we you know, highly recommend that the doctors document all the subjective complaints that the claimant has, whether they're in, a subjective complaint means you're in pain, you have a headache, you can't you know, lift, you, know, you can't move your back, you're, you know, when you sit for long periods, it's very uncomfortable or it's very painful. Those are subjective complaints that the physicians need to document because those are your those what are what designate what restrictions and limitations you may have. So when you're in a lot of pain and you can't sit for long periods, it's important that your doctor documents that. If your issue is a back issue, it's really important that you get an MRI or a CT scan and some x-rays to make sure that there's evidence that there's actually something going on in the back. So all of these things together are very important to create a very strong medical record. So Rachel, thank you for distinguishing between the objective and the subjective conditions, but a lot of um, medical conditions don't necessarily have any objective type testing or a claimant has the objective testing and it doesn't come back with a positive finding that would necessarily um, be representative of that particular condition, yet the person is still in what they consider to be disabling pain. So how does a claimant go about proving their claim if they're relying on subjective complaints? Right, there are many conditions that do only have subjective evidence and there's no way to provide an objective test to show that that, that exists, like such as fibromyalgia or migraines. Those are conditions that you can't take a test and prove that you have. So I always tell my clients, make sure that you're telling your physicians exactly what's going on with you, that they keep a pain journal, which will document how often they're having the headaches, how often they're in pain, um, what happens to them after they get the migraine, and to document all of that so that we could submit that pain journal to the insurance carrier as evidence of the issues that the claimant is having. So there are a lot, like you said, a lot of a lot of medical conditions where you really can't provide objective proof. And when that happens, we need to go along with the subjective issues and make sure that the 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 patient is communicating with the doctor and that the doctors are writing everything down because they're not in the business of getting disability claims approved. The doctors are looking to treat the patient and to get them better. So we need to work with the doctors and actually train them as to how to document for these disability claims. And so Rachel, that, that was a great point. It was gonna be my next question was about how important is it that the doctors are putting things into the medical records? And as you said, look, doctors treat patients, they don't treat the chart, and they're not filling out these medical records for, on behalf of the insurance companies. They're filling it out so that they have enough notes to know what did the claimant tell them, their patient, and what did they prescribe, and what's the treatment protocol 
so that the next time the claimant comes in, they can say, how are you feeling and what's your progress? And they have a basis to monitor. But how do you see that disability insurance companies take advantage of the doctor's medical records for a particular claimant? Well, they do this all the time. And we see this oftentimes where the insurance carriers will review the medical records. They will hire their own peer review doctors to review the, the records. And then they cherry pick what's, you know, what works for them. So they'll take take little sections out of the medical records that look like the patient is doing better. They'll take sections out of the medical records that say, you know, that this physical examination was negative. And then what they'll do is they'll focus solely on those parts of the records and say, well, the patient must not be disabled because the doctor says that they're improving or that the doctor in this section of the record says they did a physical exam and it was normal. So oftentimes what they do is they'll have their peer review doctors just look at sections of records and use them to their advantage without looking at the medical records as a whole. So what we have to do is have our, you know, work with the treating doctors to refute these peer review physicians and say, no, my patient is actually very sick, unable to work, has many restrictions and limitations. And just because I wrote in this section of the medical record that they look better today than they did yesterday, that's all relative because yesterday they were on their deathbed. So basically it's all relative as to improvement. But what I tell my clients is to make sure that when they go into the doctor's office, if they are having a good day, they do explain to the doctor that even though I'm having a good day, I'm still having all this pain. I still have these issues concentrating and focusing or whatever it may be. And to make sure that the doctors are putting that down in the records, because again, without that being documented, the insurance carriers will take advantage of whatever they wrote down for that day and they run with it. So the day you look good is the day the insurance carrier tries to cut you off. So Rachel, we represent a lot of people who either get initially denied when they apply, but the other percentage of our clients we represent are those that have been on claim for years and then their claim gets denied and the, and the claimants don't understand, I didn't get better, how do they think I got better, how could they cut me off now? And that all comes down to continuation of medical treatment. And if you don't have continuation of medical treatment, then you're gonna have weak medical support, which is the theme of this video. So what do you recommend to your claimants in order to do continuously satisfy the medical proof burden in a long-term disability insurance policy? And it's a difficult thing to do, Greg, because when somebody's been sick for years, oftentimes they have a chronic condition that's permanent and there's really no cure for it. So when somebody has something like Parkinson's or MS or some sort of chronic condition that their doctors can say, hey, you can come see me once every six months or only once a year because there's really not much I can do for you other than you taking the medications that I'm prescribing. Well, sometimes that's good for the patient because they don't like to go to the doctor that often. Sometimes it's a hardship on them if they're not feeling well to go to the doctor every two or three months. But the insurance carriers will look at that um, as they must be fine. If they're only going to the doctor once a year or even just twice a year, that gives them the indication and the go ahead to cut the claim off because they say, well, if you're not going to the doctor, you must be better, which is usually not the case. And I explained to all my clients, it's very, very important to make sure you have a continuum of care, at least going to see your physicians uh, your specialist in the specialty that you, you know, whatever condition you have, at least every two to three months, just so we have the medical records to show that, you know, at, at that you're not getting better, even if you're the same, you got to completely tell them everything that's going on, all your pain, all your issues, because if it's not documented, then it doesn't exist. So we don't want to give the carriers reasons to cut you off. And even if you've been on claim for 10 years, that's when they you know, take advantage and say, oh, look, they haven't been to the doctor that often. The doctor's really not documenting much. And that also happens is when the doctors see you so much and they see you over a really long period of time, they start detailing sometimes less in your medical records. So it's really important that the patient communicates with the doctor, hey, please make sure that you're still detailing all my issues in the records because my insurance carrier is gonna look at these every few months and they're gonna to wanna to see that I'm not doing any better. Right, and, and it, it's, you know, we always say on these videos and we say to claimants, look, your claim is usually only as good as how messed up you look on paper. Right. And it sounds simplistic or maybe not professional for us to say, but at the end of the day, the disability company, 
they're looking at you on paper. They're not necessarily looking at you as a human being. The only time they might look at you is if they choose to do an IME exam where they have you examined or if they're trying to run video surveillance of you where they hire a private investigator and they're trying to see you do something inconsistent with what you're telling your doctors or telling the disability insurance company in claim forms or attending physician statements. So you have to always have this paper log. And in my opinion, it has to be as strong as it was on day one when you did all of your initial testing and all of your regular medical visits. You have to keep that up that while you no longer have a job and you're disabled and not working, your medical care at least four to five times a year becomes your job. And Rachel, most people do do this because unfortunately they're suffering. They're always looking for a way to get better, a way to manage their symptoms, and they're going to the doctor anyhow. But there are a percentage of people who get complacent in their care because they feel like, look, there's nothing else you can do for me. Just write me my script or I'll do my home exercises. Um, I'll manage my lifestyle. I'm not doing activities that exacerbate my condition. I don't really need to see the doctor. But those people are going to have weak medical support and eight out of 10 times they're going to be denied inevitably because if it's not their current claims person, there's always going to be a new person who gets on the claim. There's always going to be a new in-house doctor. There's always going to be some other doctor they can hire to review your records and they're going to eat up your medical records if the support isn't good. So at the end of the day, if you take anything away from this video, you got to have strong medical support. All of your restrictions and limitations need to be in the records and all of your symptoms and complaints have to be in your records each and every time. And Rachel, the thing that we do, especially when we're representing our claimants ongoing, whether it's claim handling or we want an appeal and now they're back on claim, is we regularly on a quarterly basis or at least at a minimum semi-annually request copies of your medical records. Review your medical records because you know, Rachel, all of these medical records now are these automatic transcriptions. And the doctors, because they have to do all the electronic records now, not handwritten anymore. And a lot of times, things are already checked in. So complaints that you might have had for years sometimes go, sometimes come back, or sometimes you didn't have, but the doctor's not checking the box as to different things that you have. And unfortunately, your complaints aren't being logged or they're being logged incorrectly. So you have to always be aware of that and even ask the doctor for a copy of the medical records when you leave so you can verify that everything's in there. So these are a few of the tips and, and mostly being aware that you gotta have strong medical support if you want your benefits to continue. Otherwise, you're gonna be looking at a denial. If you find yourself in a disability denial situation, I encourage you to contact Rachel, myself, any of our team of disability lawyers. We always offer a free initial phone consultation where we will review your denial letter. We will review a copy of your disability policy. We'll let you know immediately a plan of action that we think could be taken for you and whether or not we believe we could assist you. Our clients are located all over the country, so we're available to assist you no matter where you live. The other thing that's very helpful is we encourage you to either subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking below or spending some time on our website where you can search by your disability company, your medical condition, your occupation. You're going to find lots of claim tips, cases about your disability company or your medical condition. What this is going to do is it's going to educate you about this disability claim process. And the more educated you are, the better position you're going to be in to protect your disability benefits. And that's ultimately what the goal here is, is to make sure you're getting the disability benefits that you need in order to replace your income. So should you need us in the future, we look forward to the opportunity to speak with you. Thank you. Thank you.